So we do ask you to be kind and to be friendly to the others when, whenever you oh, Zoom quit unexpectedly. That's funny. <laughs> it's <laughs> working here. Who's that? Who's sharing screen? Who's sharing the screen? I, know I right. think. That's just it. a staying forward oh. par excellence, just so that you know where you've landed. This is a forum <laughs> for experimentation. <laughs> and there's oh. a lot of faces that I've known before. And I see a few that I haven't seen so far. So um, yeah, we want to let you know this is this is the Wednesday Web Jam. Welcome to this session, um, which is our 65th session, by the way, and uh, which is quite unbelievable. Um, and what we do here is with just we try things, we experiment, and sometimes we fire forward, and then we have funny messages on our screen. So this is what we wanted to tell you, let you know that we, we stream this and if, um, we, we love to see your faces on screen, but if you really hate to be screened on YouTube, just switch off your camera and you'll be fine or come back on camera after, after the hour. And, and um, But we do want to have join our discussion by all means, please. So welcome anyway, um, and welcome to our premium facilitator Nachika today. Nachika, what are we doing? Uh, thank you everyone for joining. So today we are, you know, going to discuss, understand and share perspectives around the topic of conflict. And uh, as we mentioned, I would request all of you to be, you know, empathetic and uh, listen and share perspectives throughout this session and we are trying to keep it more interactive so that everyone can participate and share. So we have breakout rooms and we'll be listening uh, to the opinions and perspectives shared by our speakers. So just to introduce myself, uh, I come from India. My name is Nachiket and I've been part of this community for past one year. And a bit about myself. Uh, I grew up in India and I was fortunate enough to, you know, experience different cultures, religions, and uh, that helped me, you know, understand things better. So I was always curious as a kid and, you know, I wanted to understand different things, why we do the things the way we do. And, you know, that used to lead to a lot of discussions and sometimes it tend, used to tend to uh, move towards conflicts or disagreements to say the least. So uh, when Veepke mentioned about this uh, topic of conflict, I was, uh, you know, quite interested uh, because I was also reading at the same time a book by Edward de Bono on conflict. And in, in this book, he was uh, coming from the design thinking, lateral thinking perspective, and he, uh, you know, proposed four uh, approaches to address any conflict and starting off with the most known we you know tackle the problem head on and then we sort of if it's not resolved we try to compromise or negotiate but that's not again the best way and if it's not working at all we resort to fighting but he in this book proposed something uh, on the lines of designing a, a situation in a way that no one has to, you know, compromise. And when this was happening, I was also, you know, reflecting in my own culture. And I uh, remembered about an ancient philosopher, economist, and a royal advisor to the king uh, named Chanakya. And he was a very famous strategist and an advisor. And he also proposed something similar uh, on the lines what Edward de Bono was proposing. Uh, he had also four principles or ways of approaching a conflict, but the context was different. He was coming from more of an administrative point of view uh, in an era which was uh, marred in wars and conflicts. So he proposed uh, what we call in Sanskrit, Sam, Dam, Gand, and Bhed. So it also talked about you know persuasion as a tool negotiation uh punishment reward and 
you know dividing the enemy so i i could see uh, you know there were different parallels and approaches to resolve a conflict and they were quite contextual and uh, i was trying and learning more and more about different ways so i when vk proposed this i thought you know it's a good topic to understand what conflict means and i am sure that it's going to be uh, you know different for everyone given that uh, they come from different cultures backgrounds so i just wanted uh, all of you to write in the chat what uh, conflict means to you and uh, till that time i will just give you a broad uh, overview of how we are planning this session so we have four speak uh, three speakers with us and uh, will listen to their opinions they come from a diverse backgrounds cultures and will listen to them and then we'll go back go into the breakout rooms where we'll have more intimate conversations discussions about this topic and we'll have uh, coming back we'll reflect on it so over to you uh, vipke yes um Thank i also you. want to know um who's with us today and uh this is um gavin remedios and i would um i would ask gavin quickly just to maybe to introduce yourself with a few words and then then just tell us what's your story about conflict thanks you um um so for those who don't know me I'm a sports junkie. Um, I live in Mumbai, India. I love to travel, and um, from a working perspective, I lead the experience design practice at KPMG. Um, the story that I'm actually going to share with you today uh, involves an experience that I had while working at KPMG uh, and traveling to another country. Right. So, just to give you some context. Um, living in india as soon as we brought up we have a country which is known as an arch rival right and i'm sure many of you have you know the neighboring neighboring countries where there is some level of conflict right for us that is pakistan and um, throughout our childhood and our life there are stories that are built around pakistan narratives that are told to us that portray the country in four light right now how much of this is true how much of this is false we don't really know right but the extent of it also goes towards when we um, you know when you're in school and you have your you know football game with your arch rival in school they say that hey this is an india pakistan match right so that's the extent at which it goes now when i had the opportunity to work in the middle east i was actually working with a team of kpmg people who were pakistanis and when i went there you know all these thoughts were raising in my head that what what do i how do i interact with them you know how what is it going to be like are they going to be the demons that they have been portrayed to be um is working with them going to be a challenge and as i went through those emotions right i kind of put them aside and i just start getting to know these people because they were there everywhere i had to build a working relationship with them more than that the places that i went to eat were restaurants that were owned by pakistanis the cab that i went to work in was you know there would be an indian driver sometimes there would be a pakistani driver sometimes and what the biggest change right the biggest learning that i had from all of this was that these are just human beings you know if we keep the narrative aside right if we keep the beliefs that have been passed down to us aside you understand that these are just people they're doing their job just like you you know and they have the biggest hearts right so that was something that was a huge shift in getting you know some level of perspective to me and opening my eyes to how you see a human being 
not with the baggage or the stories that have been shared, you know, about them, but by actually getting to know them and, you know, seeing them for who they truly are. So that's my story. Um, over to you. Thank you. Thank you, Gavin. That's a beautiful story, by the way. And it shows a lot about perspectives and you might all have recognized that we sort of trying um, by the choice of speakers that we make, trying to, to put the perspective or shift perspective away from Europe and the US and trying to find some somewhere else, which is only partly true for Shia though. Um, Shia Rashid is, is from my TEDx team, by the way, but he might as well introduce himself. Shia, what's your story on conflict? Yeah, I'm uh, Shiap. Uh, uh, I'm 23 years old. I study physics. Um, I do a lot of sports beside that. And yeah, I'm a bit special in that I was born in Germany in an Egyptian Iranian household. My father's Egyptian and my mother's Iranian. And uh, um, I think both cultures have their idiosyncrasies. They obviously have areas where they overlap. But to me, the way they deal with conflict and my conflicts with each of my parents and my families of those um, have shaped my view on how conflict should be held. And uh, on the Egyptian side, I believe one of the biggest problems when I was talking with my father was that in a lot of discussions, he would come after we've had, had like discussions and conflicts, he would hit me with the, you can't talk to me like that, or uh, he's the teacher, he's the professor, he knows better. And so in Egypt, there's a lot with status where it's not necessarily the arguments that are important, but rather your position in the societal hierarchy. And in Iran, there's this concept of taruf that I would like to present to you, which is um, a sort of polite code that you have to use to navigate the waters of Iranian society. And it is pretty much if I am at my aunt's place and she asks me whether I want to have food or not, there's a certain amount of times I have to decline until I can say yes in order not to be greedy. But um, at the same time, it could be me asking someone whether he wants to join me for lunch and fully knowing that he has to decline because I'm in a better position in society. And so to me, this was always very, very weird because it takes the power of no away, because it gives you um, power over the other person and masks this over with, uh, with politeness and saying, okay, you have to act this way because of politeness. And for me, the main takeaway for these, uh, of these both cultures was that on the Egyptian side, I've learned that when we want to have good conflicts, um, we have to meet each other on eye level. We can't uh, be thinking too much about, okay, I'm the teacher here, or I'm the better person, I'm the person who's, who's got more money, who's in a better position than you. We have to meet on eye level, um, and at the same time question authority, but also I can't go into a conflict and hit someone with arguments, because I don't think that a lot of conflicts are meant to be won, but rather resolved, and so we have to meet each other in a way where we try to understand and not say, okay, I have the better arguments, but the other person is offended because I've done something which is rude in their point of view. And on the Iranian side, I've learned uh, the power of no, which uh, also I think Vipka and her daughter, which is my girlfriend, uh, have showed me and Germany as well has showed me is that saying no and drawing lines is very important in order to make sure that a conflict doesn't get out of hand. Because if you don't make sure to say soon enough, okay, this is a line, this is where you, know, you can't go any further, people are going to keep pushing back the lines and at some point you're going to be backed into a corner and that's going to resolve in, in, in big conflicts, big problems. And so saying no and drawing lines uh, is also very important. Thank you, Shia. Thank you. And this is part of um, what I found so fascinating in, in, in preparing this, that there are so many hidden lines that you can cross and, and you don't, wouldn't even realize. And this is something that Mim knows a lot about too. You all know Mim, she's from our team and a designer and lives near London and, and has a Thai background and that's a lot to bridge. Mim, your Hi, story. Everyone. I'm sorry? <laughs> your story, please. Oh, thank 
thank you. Yeah, so hi everybody, I, I'm Mim. I am a British Thai freelance designer. I'm a team member of uh, Shapeways.io and a co-organizer of Open Web Jam, like Steve Gunn mentioned. So thank you for having me today. Uh, first, I'd like to mention for, uh, that like what I'm sharing is a personal experience of mine. It's not a representation of all British or Thai people. Um, so ever since I was young, I had to move back and forth the UK and Thailand many times. I was born in Thailand, went to international school, where English is primarily used, and then uh, Thai was used at home, then moved to the UK when I was three, to Tha and then returned to Thailand again when I was four. And then I had to, and then I stayed in international school until I was around seven. And I moved to a Thai school where all my subjects are studied in Thai, apart from English, which is a second language, Japanese as a third language. And that was a very tough change for me as a person. <laughs> And uh, I had to be in that setting for 10 years. And then I moved again to the UK during the middle of secondary school and stayed in the UK ever since. And occasional visits to Thailand for either work or for either just family visits and friend visits. Um, so this is a question for me to everybody. Have you ever experienced your mother tongue language being switched to a second language or having to relearn a culture and societal norms that you're supposed to know? That is me. I have to do that often, so many times, every time I moved. During the process of adapting between the British and Thai culture, I've accidentally offended so many people and created conflict. And with my limited knowledge in communication and the culture itself, whether being British culture or Thai culture. So I'm gonna give you some examples. So for example, in Thailand, I was told off for using informal language with people who are only a few years older. I was misunderstood for being a disrespectful person because I used the wrong form of communication and instead of honoring people who are older than me that's what I was supposed to do so I can't use um, something that is equal to me for people who are older than me. I was also disciplined harshly for arguing my reasons to my teachers no matter how right or how wrong I was. I had to learn the hard way that there are different levels of communication amongst people who are older and younger. I cannot treat them equally. Thai culture is based on respect and consideration. Giving a lot of honor to those who are older than us, whether a few years older or 50 years older, it's also important. So when I moved back to the UK again for secondary school, arguing is part of the culture um, that I grew up in. To figure out something with the other person and come towards a solution, that is what an argument is for that I grew up in school. Uh, it was difficult to make my case when I was not fluent. I came across as someone who was weak. I just stayed silent. And I had to deal, having to deal with like microaggressions and racist comments already nearly every day for being one of the only person of color at my school, not being able to do anything about it because I wasn't fluent. It was such a hard transition for me. So when I was fluent enough, I was like, I've had enough. So that forced me to adapt from being a silent and reserved person that I was taught to be to, to learn and disagree respectfully, but also stand tall. So that whole experience of my life has taught me to learn and adapt in different and so, so, different societal settings, uh, not just within the UK or Thailand, but also working with others globally and also embracing that I'm multicultural and it's okay. Yes, and I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful, thank you, ma'am. We told you it would be a bit emotional, and I, and I have the the um, the idea that it's not only been Mem and Shiab and Gavin. And thank you to your three. Over to Nachikid. Yeah, thanks a lot, everyone, for sharing your perspectives. And I'd like all the participants. I was watching uh, and checking the chats, so there were a lot of comments. And I would like to take this forward into the breakout rooms. And I want you all to, you know. Uh, share your perspectives on conflict. How do you experience it in your life? And... Um... Nachiket, you're on mute, funnily. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God, so sorry. So, <laughs> okay, I'll repeat myself. So thanks a lot, everyone, for sharing your um, perspectives. And uh, I see a lot of chats and uh, discussion happening around this topic so i want every one of you to you know uh, take this into the breakout room and share your perspectives on uh, your experience about a particular conflict is it good is it bad how do you uh, you know see conflict affecting you so i'll be posting the 
question prompt in the I, chat. I do that. I, I do that, Nachika. No worries. Okay. And yeah. So we'll uh, see you back in around 10, 20, 12 minutes. So enjoy your time and we'll be sending you into the breakout rooms shortly. Thank you, Nachiket. Anupa, send us into the space. Yes, I've just made the breakout rooms, so. So people flying away. Mike, what's your second your second um, personality? <laughs> second personality. Um, your background, uh, say. Well, I mean, I, I really relate to the discussion about um, being an expat, living in a in a in, in a country that's not your your native country. Um, uh and and it's interesting because like this seems that it, it the conversation for me definitely draws me towards cultural differences um in in some ways which uh abstracting that even further is like life experience you mm -hmm. know part of our our political conflict is because of where we come from and how we were shaped as humans and a lot of that is how we were shaped by our environment. And a lot of that is how we were shaped by our parents, right? And our, and our grandparents and our family. So it's really, really interesting. And then you, you get, it, it's tribalism in a way, all of it to some degree. Not all, yeah. No, I was wondering if you were born in another country. No, no, I was born right here where I live in South Carolina, but I lived in, I've lived in uh, France, uh, England and the Netherlands are the three three other countries I've lived in. Okay. Wow. Wow, those were really powerful stories, huh? Weren't they? Mm. Yeah, I think what I think conflict, um, I think you maybe there is a sense of conflict that's already there. So once you're in a space that's external and it's bringing out the conflict, then I think you either adapt to it or you create a barrier. And then, you know, you have your own experiences and outcomes of conflict. Um, I can actually um, uh, relate to Mim's, uh, you know, stories because I also grew up in another culture. But at that time, um, you know, we were at a, such a space where, you know, I was actually having this conversation with somebody else that, you know, people were just nice. And, you know, you probably disliked you because you were probably just nasty. You know, so the, the level of conflict was very different to what we face today. You know, now there are a lot of stereotypes, a lot of pre-set uh, notions that you have about situations and people that make you act a certain way. Um, okay, Daryl is asking for help. Um, so should I just go there and just help them out? Um, yes, can I put people... Some web. Oh yeah, we've got. You want to co-host me? I can help if you need. <laughs> yes, actually, well, I you can... have to get everybody. No, I could. I could stop sessions at while. You can just go if you like, Anupa. Yeah, I'll just go there and I'll just come back. Um, yes. So we can try and see. Yeah, and Nachiket is come back. Yes, I think it's yeah. great. <laughs> um. So he's 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 come into the session and and he doesn't have the camera. And is it such more? How do you pronounce that? Can you unmute yourself? And uh, we also can you get uh, Gavin back because I think he's in one of the breakout rooms. Wait, I'll uh, just leave him there. Okay. Okay. We, we planned otherwise, but since Mark's here and Natch gets here and you're here, um, we're fine. So Natch Kit, what did you yeah. think and what has, has um, realized in the first part of our session? 
How did you like it? Yeah, it was uh, because I was experiencing it. Uh, you know, there was quite difference in the cultural uh, values and uh, you know the situations, the experiences that uh, every participant uh, speaker shared. Also, the participants who shared in the chat. So their definition about conflict was quite different, and uh, although it was you know different and diverse, it was uh, their own perspective. Which which made it unique. So, yeah, I feel uh, that's what I was looking for when I was you know searching for uh, and uh, discovering a lot more about conflict in that general. Was a, yeah, that was a great question to ask, really. And I would say we we should make something from it and just analyze what what's been there, and maybe we can just have a second session sometime. Yeah. I I was quite when when I thought about because I've been wanting to do this for a long time. And the basis was really the conversation I had with Shia with my daughter at the kitchen table. And, and um, because my daughter's very headstrong, very, very headstrong, and she doesn't have any, any difficulties drawing a red line saying no further than this. And Shia basically just explained a no for him so it was very, very difficult and he's learned a lot. So finding out that somebody who was born and raised in Germany and come, still has his, 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 his um, roots in other cultures, has to adapt, but can't find um, a clear line and can't fend for his own cause. That for me was really a revelation. So I thought, there's so many people in the Windsor Web Jam who have a bi or multicultural background that I really wanted to find out um, how they perceived it. Yeah. I actually wanted to know uh, your story of having this. Glad you shared because you proposed this and we just hopped on and uh, got oh, you didn't, you didn't and, just hop on. You had your own your own motivation to do this, and I love that very much. Yeah. Maybe course. this is the time that you that you say something about your professor in in your martial arts classes. Yeah. Uh, so that was an interesting sh story in itself. So. Uh, I have been practicing martial arts, uh, karate specifically, and uh, I was having this discussion one time with my professor and, uh, you know, we talked about how karate and, you know, all the martial arts are about, uh, you know, self-defense. Although uh, it seems to be more of an aggressive uh, art form, uh, but it's not. So uh, we had this discussion and the first day we, uh, I enrolled, I remember, you know, my uh, master telling me that it's about uh, self-defense first and uh, it's very easy to attack, but it's very difficult to, you know, uh, not attack and, uh, you know, use it only when it's absolutely required. And that that is a uh, true sense, in, in true sense, the ability to have courage and reflect that. So uh, it was quite moving and, you know, insightful at the same time because I have been practicing uh, this and it has been ingrained in some way or the other but you know having it said out and explicitly makes a difference and uh, you see you see a lot of different art forms and you know wars and things like that in different light then and uh, I, I somehow got a new perspective to see conflict in different light altogether so there's always a power uh, dynamics hierarchy when you see a conflict and uh, there's a dominance and there's you know submission and uh, we see a lot of things uh, and in movies also and uh, that kind of influences us, us but uh, having this perspective was uh, important for me to you know see it in different light so yeah I'm glad oh, that you brought that I like that by the way, I just sent out the one minute warning that we're closing breakout rooms. Did you recognize that? Yep. And now Thanks. I have no idea if the de default setting is now 30 minutes, 30 seconds or 60 seconds or whatever. So I just right. stop now, don't I? Yeah. So we'll just pull them back in. 60 seconds. Yeah. Well done. Okay. Great. <laughs> Thank you, default setting. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, 
Hey, It's just that we were very much like into the subject and then it got me out and I was like, no, it was so good. <laughs> oh, don't worry, you'll this be gets horrible. having another yeah, session hopefully. <laughs> and you'll have another breakout room to continue your discussion. No, no, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's people will be flying in now. Yeah. We have a new guest. Um, he has difficulties to enter the session. Um, so maybe just summarize um, for, for a second. We've heard about different perspectives on conflict and we have a round of sharing next when people come back. Um, and then, yay, wow. Everybody coming back at the same moment. Hello, hello. Yeah. <laughs> Ayana, are you talking to us? Yeah. yeah. Ezekiel was asking you a question before we were thrown out. And he asked me, did I start teaching university when I was 10? And I said, when I was five, I started teaching university. <laughs> Thank you, oh, wow. Ezekiel. That's a lovely compliment. Thank you. <laughs> I have a genius. <laughs> Call that conflict avoidance. <laughs> <laughs> wow, wow, wow. Thank you, Ayana. Um, yeah, it's always a bit, a bit awful to be, to be um, wrapped out of a session. What we want to, you, to know from you just shortly, just a short round of sharing. Maybe you tell us in the chat, what have you learned? What have you heard? What has been new for you? Uh, we give you a minute just to think and write the most important things down and maybe then have two, three people telling us if they want at all. You don't have to. Have to. Yeah. Just put it in the chat, something that's, that strikes you, something that you liked or disliked. Can you tell me, what did you hear from the different countries' perspectives? You know, it's, it's just really interesting. It's like, I don't know, a person comes to a meeting like this and they think, oh, I have the answers and I know, you know, and you have your own perspective. And then you start to hear all these different perspectives from different, different people, but not just from different people, but different countries where you have more factors that come into the whole entire topic. And you just think, oh, wow, maybe I hadn't thought about that or that or that. Like, I might understand conflict from two or three different countries that I've lived in, but I've never lived in all these different countries, you know, and then you hear and you listen and you just think, oh, okay, you know, conflict can be totally different, yeah, for different people. And so it's like, I'm, I'm very open to listen and, and understand how does that happen for other people and how do they deal with it and where do they find it? Where do they feel it? And what do they do with it? Yeah. You know? So that's it. Thank you. Who else has heard something that they really liked or, or are really found worth considering? Ezekiel. Yeah, I well, actually, unfortunately, I was I, I was asking um, Ayana some questions. This is more like a question that I have that you know anybody wants to jump in, and it's more about I wonder, especially with with younger generations growing up with social media and digital in digital means. I've heard from other college professors in the past saying that now students are. Um, uh, less likely to want to interact face to face, and they just want to communicate via email or some, you know, in some other written way. And I, I just I wonder how that changes uh, how we relate to each other, in, including how we resolve conflict or how we uh, uh, have those types of, of difficult conversations. So I, I don't know if anybody has any insights into that. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Ezekiel. I, I'm just reading something that Michael Thorley wrote, which I love, and, and I would love to, to enlarge on that a bit, Michael. The shame process. Why, don't, why are you thinking it? 
<laughs> as I also said, I just I'm an extroverted thinker, so I thought I'd just stick it out there. What I was noticing was um no, I'm so I'm essentially an English middle-aged middle class white male, and also feel, if I'm really honest, a kind of guilt or shame about even having the permission to engage in the conversation. That is not what anybody has said, but is something I just recognize I carry almost instinctively. And conflict, I think, can be a way of trying to resolve something that is a disconnection, almost as if we are breaching a belonging to a loyalty group, be it male, white, black. So Mimp, when you were talking about what to me sounds like something I would really struggle with, you know, moving between language, between culture, between physical space, I noticed you used the word international school, and I, I know what you mean as a label, but I'm not sure what the fuck does that actually mean? I mean, really? Um, so I just thought, I don't have any conclusion. I just thought I'm really interested in you know, what is going on in terms of when we call it conflict or how can we really engage in it? And the question I often ask people is not whether shame is good or bad, but what is your experience of conflict? So does it keep you small and you cause to retract in, or do you reach out? And understanding that in somebody else, I think is vital in order to have some form of communication, uh, certainly at an individual level. Thank you, Michael. Let's use it as a cliffhanger or as the intro for the deep dive. Over to Natchikert. Yeah, uh, thanks a lot. Thank you, Michael. Thank you, VK. And so Gerardo was saying that uh, he wanted to have another discussion. And uh, so we are going to send you back in the breakout rooms and you can continue your discussion. Uh, you can extend whatever you are saying and add another story or a perspective where you're any situation or anecdotes where you are you know, trying to empathize with that person, uh, any situation, if you have come across and have a deep dive into the topic, what you're already discussing. So off you go to the breakout rooms. Yes, please. So how do you, do you pronounce your name? Uh, it's Sujata. Sujata, hi. Uh, Have you been here before? Yes, Sujata. I see she was there in the last session and she disappeared. Ah, oh. ah now she's found her way. Very good. Thank and we've got a new participant. Wow, this is so valuable. We should have a two hour session. Yeah. I do hope this is going on in, in, in the backstage. Yeah. yeah. Should we get one of the speakers to come here or should we just um, carry on? Anupam, maybe you can share your thoughts. Yeah. Um, I feel uh, conflict is required it, in some way because it encourages people to think beyond their uh, comfort box. Uh, irrelevant conflict is the worst because it's a waste of time, your energy and just yourself because uh, it's completely pointless and you don't grow or learn from that. So I think as individuals, we need to gauge and understand where and at what point we engage with conflict, whether it's an inner conflict or an external conflict. I think one has to be very conscious about it. Because I think if, if we get into a conflict without any action or notion, it just becomes a word, it just becomes words of fury. So mm. yeah. But we yeah. have a few key words that I try and write down and maybe we can we can use them later. Growth is really important, I think. 
Yeah. And I think the way you mentioned that can be, you know, internal and external conflicts. So from uh, some of the speakers uh, that share their stories, I felt like, you know, uh, there were different layers to a conflict. So there are some uh, internal conflicts that we deal within ourselves. And then there are some external conflicts with the surroundings, with the people we interact with, uh, the situations. So, uh, you know, it's very nuanced and subtle in that way, but, you know, uh, it's difficult to see from outside what's happening inside a person's mind and uh, their upbringing, their culture actually, you know, defines how they deal or address a particular situation. And, uh, you know, in, in uh, this book of Edward de Bono, he uh, says that, you know, everyone is always right and uh, no one is ever right. So that sentence was quite uh, you know confusing initially because uh, it talks about different perspectives and every individual in his own right has uh, you know a particular perspective in which he is right to address that conflict uh, and it may or may not necessarily be true for a uh, you know observer who is seeing that conflict uh, so that was another perspective that i could gain and uh, it's it's actually helpful to you know empathize better with another person that he might not be in the same situation or using the same lens that you are using to see or view the conflict mm. so that helps you empathize better i guess true yeah it it makes me wonder that you know when you're in a conflict how do you gauge that moment where you know that when do you change the role from the aggressor to the sympathizer or the empathizer and you have that relevant conversation? Because I think at times when we're in like in conflict, you know, we forget that this role is important, but also it, how does it differ from organizational conflict where you have set guidelines and rules to personal conflict? So I think I think maybe it's different. Maybe it's your own personal uh, approach that comes into play in an organizational setup. So I think that's also kind of a place to talk about. Hmm. Cool. Yeah. I'm trying to extract from the chat what the different perspectives on conflict are. And I don't think we will have a lot, a lot of time to, to, to collect learnings, but maybe we can have some more for the backstage discussion. Because Hi. this is just so valuable. Hi, Caleb. Hello, sorry, I had to go earlier because I had a, a work call I had to take. I, I wasn't sure if um, there would be much else happening when I came back. I'm sorry I missed it. Oh, good, you came back. Where do you want to go? Well, there's always lots happening, and especially oh, on a session about you conflict, okay. you know, you can hop right in. You may stay with us, or you may say where you, um, what your first breakout session was, and if you want to join those people again. Oh, no, I, I actually missed the first breakout session. This oh, is, right, right. Sorry, right. I'm, I'm uh, really out of... Um, don't worry, don't worry. That's <laughs> Out cool. of the loop, really. It's the first time I've come to one of these, to be perfectly honest. Um, yes, yeah, mm -hmm. so I met Mimp on a course recently, and she invited me to it. So I wasn't entirely oh, sure what to... Um, so would you like to share your thoughts on conflict or how you interact with it? Um, I'm not... Maybe I've, I've just um, listened to some of your things you were talking about. I'm not really sure quite what to... Say immediately. It could be from a personal experience or from an organizational front. There is no set guideline that we need to talk about. Just, you know, we're just chatting about what we see as conflict and, you know, our uh, just thoughts on it. Okay. So this is any, any type of conflict, really? Yeah. Um, I suppose sometimes if you're, if you have a, a, a boss, a uh, manager, whatever it might be, uh, and they have very specific ideas about something, it can be difficult to be honest with them. And you might 
you might find uh, maybe this is not exactly the right sort of thing, but sometimes it can be quite difficult to feel like you can say what you actually think because you have to behave a certain way and you have to come across as a certain way. So you might kind of let let things happen because you're maybe more because you're trying to avoid conflict because you don't want to. Uh, it's because you know, it's risky. Be aggressive. Do you, do you see it as be, as risky if you're the the younger one or the less experienced one, and your boss comes across? Uh, yeah, I would say so. Yeah, we had this discussion before, so that's really interesting. Like, how what what are people allowed to know about your behavior and conflict? And can you can you say that openly, or can you not? And obviously, it's not not only true for people from cultures that are a bit more careful about conflict or, or try to avoid conflict or saying no, but it also seems to be true for intergenerational conflict or status, clashes of status or things like that. Yeah, absolutely. Hmm. Wow. Yeah. Um, now, check it. We don't really have time for the full 40 minutes, I would say. Should I send a three minute warning into yeah. the session? Yeah, even I was thinking. Yeah. Uh, or is it only a two minute? Two minutes, probably, will be better. Yeah. Okay. Wow, yes, I, the, the chat seems to have been exploding and I try to extract a few things and it's always, uh, there's things that are repeating themselves. Like yeah. the question for growth, how do you perceive conflict? And, and some people say it's, it's good for, for growth. And the shame thing came up again. And, and first I thought that Michael Thorley was talking about um, like Mim saying, I can't do that, I'm ashamed. And, and then it came, along with this, I'm, I'm a middle-aged white male and I'm, I'm ashamed I can't um, be part of the conversation. And, and this, is, this is interesting because I wouldn't have thought that. I thought there's people being very comfortable with conflict, maybe not personally, but with the concept of conflict and others who say, no, I, this is not how I learned it, how I, I've been socialized. Yeah, I think your personal background or your personal uh, notions of the way that you think your own personal thinking has a lot to do with how you respond mm -hmm. to conflict mm -hmm. and your own personal experiences. And uh, I think that plays a big part, whether you are like, say, what role do you take as the aggressor, as the mediator, as mm -hmm. the conversationalist? So I think, um, you know, you just have to adapt to that kind of sentiment while you're in a conflict and at what scale yeah and uh, another observation is like we are not uh, you know taught in a very formal way how do you address a particular conflict mm -hmm. and uh, you know we tend to adopt we see observe in our environment uh, how people interact how mostly elders interact um, the people we admire aspire to become uh, interact and address problems and then that's how we add those nuances in our behavior tweak it and uh, try to you know resolve yeah but yeah it's quite interesting to see you know so many different uh, versions of or approaches to address conflict so it's quite interesting absolutely Oh, welcome back, everyone. I think we haven't lost anybody. I'm glad. Yeah. Good to have you back. Um, same thing as always. Um, what have you experienced? Is have you, have you got have you learned anything new that makes you uh, more able to empathize, or have you found um, have you tripped over something that you formerly didn't recognize? 
you know, clue just, about. Yeah, Carol. May I, just before we came back, Mark was making a comment about the about getting something from conflict. Mark, we didn't get to the end of that. Could we? Could we hear that? Would you mind sharing that with the group? I thought that was really interesting. Yeah, it was just kind of an insight as, as I was listening to the conversation we were having, it, which is um, it's sad if you don't get something out of a conflict. That just kind of occurred to me as like I was thinking about how, you know, you go through this emotional journey and it gets really intense when you're in, in a conflict sometimes. Yeah, growth. Right. But there are times when you're you I mean, there are times when you on reflection, even much later you feel like, wow, that was such a gift, right? That I learned something about myself or about how I see the world or about the other person. But there are those times when it's just like complete loss, right? When you, you, the conflict cannot be resolved. And, and that's kind of maybe on an emotional level where you don't have closure, almost like a, a, um, you know, a loss of a, a loved one or something like that. It's maybe not that intense, but it can be, especially if you, like the, we've all been through those situations where you have a con conflict with somebody and it, and it just breaks a relationship that was a good relationship prior to the conflict in some way, maybe it was building, but it, and then, and then it's just over and that's complete loss. And it's really hard to learn from that. I mean, no, it's not hard to learn from that, but it's, yeah, it is. Sorry. Anyway, that's where I was coming from. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. It's like, um, Manfred just says in the chat, it's just not enough time. And you're absolutely right. I, I so much agree. And I, I, I would say Nachika, just prepare another session <laughs> on this because it's such a rich topic. There's a few things that I tried to extract from the chat before you, um, you can go on sharing. And there's like the growth theme that I just uh, had into the camera. The shame thing, which is obviously not only true for cultures where, where conflict is not really allowed or not really good, but for the other side as well, which was surprising for me. And then there's the, the topic of being honest versus being polite. And they, should, we, should we avoid conflict? And Marcus has just said no. Uh, and the emotional, can we, should we be emotional in the conflict or should we just rather try and take emotions out. So um, yeah, but that was just a quick sharing to appreciate all the things that you've been uh, posting in the chat. So from the second round of breakout rooms, what else do you want to share? Just unmute yourself and speak. Pat Chua. Pat Chua, was, was that saying you wanted to say something? Just unmute yourself. Go on, Park. <laughs> okay. hey, sorry. Yeah, yeah. I was. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know why I didn't recognise my name. Um, I think we we're talking about the idea of uh, conflict, and and we did talk about kind of avoiding conflict. Is that good? So, like, it's, it, you've got the post it there. Um, I think conflict is also about. Is it personal? Uh, Donna says something about, you know, conflict in a, in a situation. Is it, you know, like, does it matter? Does it stem from the person being seen, being heard of how they would like to be seen or heard? And I think that person bit always plays in a conflict. And, and it really then depends on actually, do we really know that person, et cetera, et cetera. And also it goes back to kind of what, the speakers were saying that, you know, actually culture has an influence um, on that person. And, and I can't help but think that conflict is also part of communicating something, regardless what it is. And um, I think that's, that's what, um, that's as much as I can say, I think, as much as you yeah, can get away from um, it. just feels like the hour is so short and there's so much to cover. So your brain is kind of thinking all the time. <laughs> Great, if we achieve that, thank you very much, Puck, for saying that. And um, I, I happily invite you, all of you, to the backstage. We switch off YouTube in a, in a couple of minutes and, um, and then continue the, the, the conversation. And yeah, um, yeah. I would just ask for Frederico to, to share what he wants to share. And Ayana, then I might hand it over to Anupa for a minute to announce the next session so that everybody knows what's next week. But please stay on, Ayana. 
Ready to go, just go. Okay, yeah. No, it was fun because the four of us were from different places and we have different approaches to conflict. And the last conversation was about racism. And we also have different approaches to racism. For example, in Colombia, we are not racist, we are classist. We, it's about classism, you know, yeah. So, but in that, I mean, just, I want to say that it's about the, the belief systems, uh, the way that you're going to approach every single conflict, because maybe uh, we were speaking with uh, my New Yorker pal, that maybe a Bogotano and a New Yorker, we can have a better understanding. We want to deal with a conflict than with they say that he's from Ecuador, our neighbor country, you know? So it's about the belief system. And we always, maybe we think this is the proper way to face a conflict, but no one knows really. And I've been in, in courses when you, you try to have proactive uh, confrontation. And in the end, it's always going to be biased by your beliefs. Because for me, it's okay to confront it, to be straightforward, but maybe for Mark that was saying this, maybe not, I don't know, I'm just saying. And maybe he said that, that is very over confrontative, this guy, he's very crazy. So we're never going to be on a balance on this, that's my point. And maybe I have more things in common with a New Yorker with, than with a Mani, guy from Manizales that is another city from here in my country, <laughs> so, because of that. Uh, wow, thank you very much. I just wanted to add something real quick. So if you can find some common ground, that, that is very key to uh, just find something, whether it be values, whether it be the same religion, whether it be, you know, hey, we got to keep the boat afloat. That was the piece I wanted to add. <laughs> Thanks, Dana. Um, yeah, maybe that, that's, that's the, the next part of, of the session. How, how do we find common ground? Or where, where do we start off for conflict resolution, which is a long road to go. Thank you, everyone. Thank you to Gavin and to Mim and to Shiab, last but not least, for giving your input. That was wonderful. And you needed a lot of courage to do that and, and to open up about everything that you said. So thank you very much for that. Anupa, what are we going to expect for next week? Um, so. Oh. Anupa, you froze. Did we? Oh, we. Oh. <laughs> that was kind of. In, in the very crucial moment, did I say the thing about failing forward? <laughs> there so is no other way. Yes, there's no other way. Can you can you just uh, lend Anupa your voice in an I am, I, Yeah, I'm back. Yeah, oh, you're back. Yeah. yeah. So I'll just make this quick. Uh, it's with uh, the WebJam community. So what's your go-to tool method? Uh, you know, approach. So since there are so many of us, and we all have a certain way of using a you know a framework or a tool in our own style. So can we uh, find similarities? Can we find differences? Uh, can we create something new? So that's what the session is about, that, you know, building and exploring and, you know, just sharing like the type of work that we do, uh, not the work that we do, but the type of tools that we use in our work. So join me and uh, stay tuned for more co conversation on conflict. Thank you very much, Anupa. Yeah. So, um, goodbye to YouTube at this point, and I invite you all that you want to come with us into the backstage and everybody else who, who has to go, sadly, see you next week, hopefully, and thanks for being with us. Daryl, you're allowed to go to bed. <laughs> Bye, YouTube. <laughs> oh, poor guy. I'm so proud you made it. <laughs> So he's switching off YouTube. Mimp, you are. No, wait. Am I host? I don't know. Um, I, let's make you host. Oh, okay. Yes. Yes. Hi, YouTube again. <laughs> YouTube will not go. Yes, now you host. Now you can. Now I'm host and I'm going to turn on. Press the button.